So guys, let's talk about what the highest probability way to trade really is, at least using a technical analysis, not using any kind of high level data like footprint and all those other things that I'll be talking about very, very soon in a lot more depth on the channel and beyond. Um, what we're going to be talking about is essentially something called block to block. So typically, if we are going up in structure like this and we come down into you know a level down here, a little cheeky demand level, then when I ask people often and I say, look, where is price most likely to go if it reacts from this level? Where is it most likely to go? Is it most likely to go up here? Is it most likely to go up here? Is it most likely to go, you know, up here? It always surprises me that the vast majority of people will say here, it's most likely to go and take out this high. And that's not true because in reality, technical analysis and price is always significantly more likely to travel less distance than more distance because we've got to understand that although we are you know we've studied technical analysis and all of these different elements of price that can give you the illusion that you are getting or gaining control over the market and you've got to understand that at any single one of these actual price levels here any single one of them Someone could come in and drop the most ungodly amount of orders in here. Price could come up into this first one and rock it down. It could do the same into the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. Now, why am I telling you this? Because it's very important to have our actions reflecting how we feel. And if we understand this concept, yet we are one of those people who are, you know, saying that it's most likely to go up here, that is not reflecting what is actually going on. Instead, we should have rules that work around and basically work with what we know to be true. And ultimately, this is true, because most of trading is just probabilities. And we are expecting that, okay, most of the time, for example, we, you know, we'll see it come to the high, and then, you know, we'll get this uh, result, okay, and we're relying on the risk reward in this particular example, um, and all that sort of stuff. But in reality, when we understand that it could change any one of these price levels, the way that we choose to manage our plan may be very, very different. And again, this is not me knocking risk reward. Um, I'm a huge advocate of all of those things. However, this will change the way that uh, most people manage risk. Because when we understand that it's mo more likely to travel less, then one of my favorite things to do is have a systematic way to identify where the high probability first target is. This is an area that's normally around this sort of area. And most of the time, we can be fairly sure that even if price eventually goes down and smashes through this level, that we will have a little, maybe even just a wick up to this level and continue going down. Okay. Now, this is significantly higher probability. And one of the major drawbacks that I hear from most people when I mention something like this is they're like, oh, the distance from here to here isn't good enough on my time frame. It's just not good enough. Now, in response to that, I would just say that. This distance may be not very much on something like the one minute, but on something like the four hour, the daily, th that distance will be a good 20, 30, maybe even 40 or 50 pips sometimes. And when we understand the perspective that we get from the higher time frame, and we're no longer trying to wait for these colossally large moves, this really, really opens the door for us, up the door for us, because the higher time frame, the main benefit we get is perspective. And if we can get that, but oh, sorry, but the drawback um, is time slash waiting slash patience. However, if we can eliminate some of the time whilst also getting the perspective that we get from the higher time frame, then that's going to be a very, very powerful tool for us. And then this range that we've got right here could be, as it is in this case, obviously this is just the diagram, about 35 pips. Okay. And then you might be looking at that going, oh, well, this doesn't look good because it's like, you know, it's a one to one. Of course not. But that's where refinement and other things like that entry refinement comes into the equation, looking for confirmation within those levels. That's how you begin adding um, probability and adding uh, likelihood to your trade setup. OK, now, of course, none of this is financial advice, by the way, as always, just take it. Um, always do your own due diligence and make sure you backtest things without risk. But an alternative to that would be instead of taking full targets up here, 
sometimes we like to come up, take a partial profit here and take partials at every level that we see. OK, because ultimately working with the theory that I mentioned at the beginning, something could change any one of these levels. It could even change not at a level, but the best and most systematic way that we can achieve things with technical analysis alone is by identifying levels and then taking out partials at those levels or managing our risk accordingly. It could be we hit this first area here, we move to break even, which is often what I will do, okay, or when we break out of this level, okay? And then as we go up, we can begin partialing as we go up into these higher regions up here. Now, this isn't suited to everyone. I just want to preface this. In the last video, I was talking about keeping things simple. And, you know, for a lot of people, when they first start, they just find that a standard risk reward and relying on that is a lot easier because it's so much easier just to, you know, kind of put a position in confirmation or not and just be like, okay, cool. I know that most of the time it's going to come up here. I don't really want to get into the nitty gritty of, okay, it's likely to do this here, likely to do this here, because it's confusing. No one likes to do that. And to be honest with you, I never really got comfortable with that until I'd really mastered the basics and the really, really simple stuff. Because as I said in that video the other day, you know, if you try to build a house on sand, it's just going to crumble down and overcomplicating things too early is the equivalent of doing that in sand okay and so let's look at an example of this so let's go to the four hour time frame okay so here's a nice example so right here came into this level right here and then it's very easy if you were looking at recent structure to be like, okay, well, maybe price is going up in this structure because, you know, we were breaking out of this high over here and then we kind of look like we're going bullish. It's also very symmetrical in the move. And so it's likely to go higher. And I would agree with all of those things. However, okay, that does not mean that necessarily there is no option to get involved here. If we pay close attention to here, after we tapped into this level, we did reject and we came down. We came down into this area down here. Okay, now I haven't drawn that perfectly, but we came down into this area over here. Now, why is this significant? Well, remember what we just said, okay? We had a very high likelihood of going down here. Now, that's a 31 pip range. If we were to go down to the five minute or the one minute, for example, and actually play around with this, we can see that we had a nice break of structure, at least the net. Let's just check if that was a valid, okay. Okay, so we had just about had a break of structure here. I'd imagine this would look a lot clearer on like the one minute or something. And then we had, after we retraced, obviously completing the overall pattern of down, up, down, like so. Then in the retrace somewhere within this area over here would have been a really, really nice place to potentially get involved. Now, of course, you can refine this down more and really understand about how all of the different technicalities within this work, such as... <clears throat> When we go right here, if we were using legitimate um, high probability areas, then on a time frame like this, you could be like, okay, cool. Price has just touched in here at this point in time. Ooh, just touched in here. Where's it most likely to go? Literally just marking out valid lows, which does require you have a system to actually mark out valid lows and highs and identify it in a way that isn't just, you know, oh, this looks like a high or low. Um, and then, you know, having something like this down here, be like, okay, this is target one, this is target two, whatever it may be, okay? Equally, there could be another method where you're using imbalance, or there could be another method where you're using, you know, something else. But the bottom line is that whichever one you pick, you're being systematic with, and you make sure that you've tested it accordingly, okay? And so it's a very, very simple tool set here, because when you combine the higher timeframes with the lower timeframes, you get the benefit of all of that perspective, and knowing that there is going to be even a little bit of orders at certain and levels or make a high uh, an estimation that there will be and then you can just you know, manage your risk according to the fact that you don't know for certain what is going to go what is going to happen because no matter how much we learn we never know for certain and this is one of the traps that people get into they learn so much about technicals they think that what they are predicting is actually what is going to happen and one of the biggest transitions that you're going to need to make is to transition from that line of thinking into a line of thinking where you accept that no matter what you do you're never going to know everything. 
And so when you adapt your rules around that, that is when you really become a very, very powerful trader. Okay, so I really, really do hope that this video has helped you. If it has, I'd appreciate you liking the video and all that fun stuff. And if you want to learn more about these sorts of concepts, how we piece all of this together, then I do recommend checking out the Academy. We've got lots of new stuff coming. The Footprint software, we're just running into a lot of issues with at the moment, but we are on literally the last stage um, of the process right now. So it should be done very, very soon. So I hope that you're looking forward to that. I'll also be making videos about how we use that as time goes on. Um, but yeah, I appreciate your patience for that because I know a lot of you are excited. But uh, but either way, um, you know, footprint is not a necessity. Um, as long as you really understand these kind of fundamentals and how to combine thing and com uh, bleh, combine things, the relationship between time frame stuff like that, structure, then you'll put in a very very powerful position. Okay, so until next time, guys, take it easy. And if you have got any content ideas, drop them in the comment section below, and I'll see you very very soon.